Good morning, Codgers. Welcome to Gunpar's Workshop. I'm Loz, and I think it's overdue for me giving you another little workshop update. It slipped from Sunday, so I'm now calling this Workshop Wednesday Waffle. So, what have I been up to in a week and a half? I've finished the lap joints for the drive gates, which was an exercise for me in learning how to use the various saws and the chisels, and I'm happy with that. You should see a little bit going on in the background. And ancillary to that, I've managed to get a whole set of uh, hardware, including two pairs of hinges, some pair of hold down bolts, some springs so that'll be progressing when the good weather comes up and we're finished moving some stone on the area of the drive around the gates so that was that what else have I done oh yes I've moved the pine charging station which was up on the wall here to the other half of the garage to make room on the big expanse of French cleats to put a couple of shop bought tool caddies in pine. I've put the French cleat plywood backs on them and hung them up and you should see that in the background. I'm not happy with them uh, but we'll see how it goes. They're up and they're visible and I'll get through that. Uh, on the bandsaw there is a video in because I've nearly finished the small parts crosscut sled for the bandsaw. You'll see a bit in a second. I'm going to do a full length make a video of that. But prior to that, I plucked up the courage to take the wide blade that it came with off and put a very narrow blade on. And I've started practicing cutting curves and circles with that. That's been off and on several times as I used the wide blade to cut the curve in the crosscut sled. You can see a picture of it about now. So there's that. I've... what else have I done? Oh yeah! I've got a bag of Trend caster wheels for the Trend router table. They'll be going on this week. I finished assembling the Rockler uh, sleds, there's three of them, if you remember I showed you the boxing. This is the coping sled which was quite easy to assemble, that's for cutting uh, routed thingamabobs bobs on the end grain of things like the frames, the doors, because cutting end grain on router tables is p particularly problematic. Got some new teeth in, I need to wear them in. Uh, so there's that. The. Can I get it? The Rockler, they can see, that's the sled that mounts on the baseboard. This is for box joints. Now it comes with three different brass guides that you're supposed to match up with router bits. So their guides come in quarter inch, three eighths and half inch and I've got a three eighths carbide upcut bit, I think it is. So that's the first one of three, so I'll be able to do quarter, three eighths and half inch box joints. What I've also done, in line with this and other things is, is I went to b q last week, got myself a sheet of 12mm MDF, and that is going to initially do the sacrificial spoiler board that clicks on, screws on this. It came with one, and if you want to do all three sizes, you have to make two more. So I think what I'm doing, I'm keeping the original as a template, and I'm making 
but the, the first job with this is making three sacrificial backs, one for each thickness of box joint, of box uh, fingers. And because of that thickness, I'll be using that to make maquettes to learn how to use the, the various options. When I went to the b and I'll show you the picture of what I bought back in the back of the little smart car. There was that board. There was, and the camera. This big chunk of pine furniture board. It's from a project to the granddaughter. She wants one of those double bowl dog feeders, so I'm making it out of that, just reusing her original bowls. And I got two sticks of pine and one long, as you have seen, I got an eight foot length of oak twin. These are all the same thickness as that MDF, and I'm going to be jointing and gluing these two together to get the near four inch wide pieces to come match with these and then hopefully I can start making some fancy little boxes. That's the plan. But that trip to B&Q, aside from the traffic, meaning it was like a three hour round trip for something eight miles away, uh, 103 quid. 103 quid. 25 quid for an eight foot length of oak, 35 quid for the the glued together furniture board. It's not cheap these days, is it? So there's that. Did I mention the crosscut sled for the bandsaw? That's nearly finished. I just need to put the fence at right angles using the curve I've cut as a guide. I'm also still still playing around with small parts sled for, for the table saw. So that's ongoing, but at the moment, due to, so some of you know what's going on domestically, I'm just popping into the garage for half an hour here and there when I feel up to it. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the health update. So Nemesu is doing well. She's back to the normal on the tablets and waiting for her uh, TIA clinic assessment. I had my MR last Friday. Very tight. So that taught me what happens if somebody shows you in the biscuit tin and bangs the tin with hammers for 40 minutes. But it was necessary. Uh, the the goodish news and the other not so good news is, of course, yeah, there is something going on with, with the prostate. Uh, it'll need another course of tablets and I check up every three months on the PSA blood test and maybe biopsies, depending on how it goes. And wonders of the National Health Service. While they were there, the scan found other stuff. So I've got stuff going on with my bowels and my uh, lymph nodes down there. So I've got to have another camera. I don't know the way things are going. I'll be on telly and I'll get a whole series to tell myself. So anyway, not worrying about that. We'll make that when we get to it. I'm feeling okay myself, just tired and worried about the sermon. That's it. Uh, what else? So, this, this, this. Oh, yeah. I unboxed my Rikita lunchbox thicknesser, as you'll see, and I've put it on a new shelf that, that I cut from a dismantled Billy bookcase under my portable Laxor table to, uh, resting on the Stanley portable saw horses. So that's a, a good temporary place for that. I've unboxed the a new vacuum and there's bits in the making for a possible video explaining why. Basically, it was the cheapest vacuum with a push name on it that had the power through, so you can attach the power tool to it and it turns the turns itself on and off as you turn the power tool on and off. And it's got uh, a decent hose and it's got the automatic filter shaker. And if, if you know the Festool, the actual HEPA filter is separate 
from the area where the dust is collected. So the bag that collects the dust and the HEPA filter are kept separate. So the filter's not like in the drum uh, extractor. The actual filter's stuck in the bin where everything's swirling around. In these, that's that. Most of those were ever brand, uh, 455, six, 700 quid, and I couldn't stunt for that along with everything else. So I've got the baby, and it'll do me soon. Those of you that have hinted I may be <laughs> going full Monty into the, the festival uh, uh, rabbit hole is that, uh, no, the uh, existing power tools, my cheap track saw, belt sander, jigsaw, and rotary sander, they're going to be used with the first tool until they wear out and I need to buy something else. So, rumours of me selling another kidney are grossly exaggerated. But these things have lasted me a while and they'll be okay until they break and then I will be replacing them with, with a nice one, but they're here for the moment. Oh! Nearly went, nearly went. I'll keep it a little bit. That's it. Oh, before I forget, the other thing I did manage to do this week is I completed putting all those shooting board bits together with the French Combo back. Our Stumpy Nubs commercially priced plans. I made a complete dog's dinner of it. Uh, I don't like it. We'll see how it works. It's not working with that cheap four inch uh, smoothing plane at the moment. It might have to wait or I might actually just stump out when the pension recovers and get myself a properly made one by somebody who knows what they're doing. But that's longer term. I've got enough work to do with the machines for the moment and that's going back on the wall. There we go. That's all I've got time for, Basil. I'll catch you again. I don't know whether it'll be a Sunday update or a workshop Wednesday waffle. But we'll see how it goes. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Hopefully I'll have all the jigs and sleds done by the end of this month or early March and then I'll be making boxes. Making boxes. I've got the wood, I've got the tools. Where have I put that little? And I have the router bits. Uh, I've got a couple more router bits, but that's not a major, well, it is a major expense, isn't it? With these uh, ceramic cutting blades or whatever they are. They're not pocket money prices. Anyway, that's enough of me whinging. It's good to touch base. I hope you guys are doing well in yours. I'm enjoying myself in here. It's a good outlet for frustrations and worries. Uh, there we go. So I'm off for my cup of tea because the tablets are working and I'll catch you again. You crack on guys. <laughs>